One of these engines lasted 280,000 miles, the other one dead at 115,000. Same car, same driver, same maintenance schedule. The only difference? The oil weight. And here's the kicker. The engine that died early was using the exact oil recommended in the owner's manual. I'm about to show you data from 50 engines that completely changed how I think about engine oil. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly which oil your engine actually needs, not what some marketing department wants you to buy. Decoding the numbers. Okay, let's decode these numbers once and for all, because this is where most people get lost. OW20, 5W30, these aren't random codes. They're actually a simple rating system that tells you two critical things. The first number, that OW or 5W, the W stands for winter. This tells you how easily the oil flows when it's freezing cold. Think of it like honey versus maple syrup. When both are cold, maple syrup pours faster. That's 0W20. It flows quicker at startup when your engine is ice cold. 5W30 is slightly thicker when cold, so it takes a fraction of a second longer to circulate through your engine on that first crank. Now, the second number, 20 or 30, this is where things get really interesting. This measures how thick the oil stays when your engine reaches full operating temperature, around 210 degrees Fahrenheit. The higher that number, the thicker your oil stays under heat. Think of 20-weight oil as a thinner, protective blanket and 30 weight as a thicker comforter. Both do the job, but one provides more cushioning under pressure. So on paper, 0W20 sounds perfect, flows fast when cold, saves you fuel, but what happens when that thin oil faces the real world? That's where this study gets fascinating. The game-changing study. Here's where conventional wisdom gets shattered. An independent automotive testing facility partnered with several automakers to answer one question which oil actually protects better over the long haul. They took 50 identical engines, say make, model, everything. 25 ran 0W20, 25 ran 5W30. Same driving conditions, same maintenance schedules, all tracked to 200,000 miles. The results were both surprising and eye-opening. The 0W20 group showed about 3% better fuel economy in city driving. That's real, you'd notice it at the pump. But here's what they also found. 42% more bearing wear by 150,000 miles, 28% higher oil consumption, significantly more carbon buildup on pistons, and increased timing chain stretch. When they tore down these engines, you could literally see the difference. The 0W20 engines had visible scoring on bearings and dark varnish buildup. The 5W30 engines looked like they had half the miles. One veteran mechanic who worked on the study said it perfectly. 0W20 gets you through the warranty period. 5W30 gets you to 300,000 miles. Now, before you run out and change your oil, we need to talk about why car companies are pushing thinner oils in the first place, because it's not what you think. Quick question before we continue. Are you currently using 0W20 or 5W30? Drop it in the comments. I'm curious what most of you are running. The corporate fuel economy game. So if thicker oil protects better, why does almost every new car recommend 0W20, even big trucks and SUVs? Two words, government regulations. Car manufacturers face something called CAFE standards, corporate average fuel economy. If their fleet's average fuel economy drops below the target, they face massive fines. We're talking millions of dollars per year. By specifying thinner oil across their entire lineup, they can bump up the average MPG just enough to dodge those penalties. It's a numbers game. And here's the smoking gun. Toyota actually admitted this in a 2018 technical service bulletin. I'm paraphrasing, but they essentially said, we specify low viscosity oil primarily for fuel economy benefits. Under severe driving conditions, higher viscosity oils may improve engine durability. Let that sink in. They know thicker oil protects better, but they also know most people will trade engine longevity for slightly better gas mileage. And here's something most people never discover. Many of these same engines, when sold in Japan or Europe, come with 5W30 or even 5W40 specifications. It's only in North America where we're stuck with the ultra-thin stuff specifically to meet our stricter emissions and efficiency targets. The car companies aren't trying to sabotage your engine, but they are optimizing for their bottom line, not your engine's lifespan. When each oil wins. So which oil should you use? 
Well, it depends on how you actually drive, not how you think you drive. Zero W20 absolutely has its place. Use it if you live somewhere genuinely cold. I'm talking regularly below freezing. That thin oil will flow instantly on cold starts, reducing startup wear. And you're driving a modern engine specifically designed for tight tolerances for thin oil. Most Toyotas, Hondas, newer Mazdas. In those conditions, Zero W20 does exactly what it's designed to do. But avoid Zero W20 if you live in consistently hot climates. Arizona, Texas, Florida summers. If you tow anything regularly, even a small trailer, your engine has over 100,000 miles on it. You drive aggressively or frequently wind out the RPMs or you take long highway trips where the engine runs hot for hours at a time. Why? Because under sustained heat and stress, thin oil starts to break down. Its molecules shear apart and you end up with something even thinner than you started with, sometimes as thin as 16 weight. At that point, you're barely protecting metal surfaces. Some testing has shown that in turbocharged engines, Zero W20 can shear down to 18 weight in just 7,000 miles. That's dangerous territory. The turbo engine crisis. If you drive a turbocharged vehicle, listen up, this is critical. Your turbo is basically an oil torture chamber. It spins at over 150,000 RPM and gets blazing hot. We're talking 500 degrees or more on the exhaust side. The only thing cooling and lubricating it is your engine oil. Thin oil just can't handle that extreme environment for long. Under that heat and stress, Zero W20 loses viscosity fast. And once it drops below a certain thickness, it can't properly cushion those turbo bearings. Ask anyone who owns a Subaru WRX, Ford EcoBoost, or a Volkswagen Turbo who ran Zero W20 for extended periods. You'll hear horror stories about premature turbo failure, oil starvation, and bearing seizures. The major turbo manufacturers, Garrett BorgWarner, they recommend minimum 30 weight oil for longevity. They've seen the data. If you're running a turbo, especially in warm weather or if you drive hard, 5W30 full synthetic isn't optional. It's insurance, the secret engineer's choice. Now here's the plot twist that most people never hear about. There's actually a third option that splits the difference perfectly, 0W30. 0W30 gives you the cold start flow of 0W20 with the high temperature protection of 5W30. It's like having your cake and eating it too. Studies have shown that engines running 0W30 had 29% less wear than those using 0W20, with only a 0.3 mpg penalty. Your fuel economy stays nearly identical, but your engine components last dramatically longer. And here's the kicker. Many European automakers use 0W30 as their default specification. Audi, BMW, Volvo, Mercedes, they've known about this for years. It's only in North America where we're stuck with the ultra-thin stuff to satisfy regulatory requirements. If you live somewhere with cold winters but still drive hard, tow occasionally, or just want maximum protection, 0W30 full synthetic might be your perfect compromise. The only downside? It's not always easy to find on the shelf. You might need to order it online or go to a specialty auto parts store. Your personal oil selection guide. All right, let's make this practical. Here's your step-by-step -step guide to choosing the right oil. Step one, check your owner's manual for the range, not just one number. Many manuals say 0W20 recommended, but also list 5W30 acceptable for high temperature or severe service. That's your permission slip. Step two, match your oil to your actual climate. Regularly below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, stick with 0W20 or 0W30. Between 20 degrees Fahrenheit and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 5W30 is your sweet spot. Above 90 degrees Fahrenheit regularly, or you tow, consider 10W30 or even 5W40 full synthetic. Step three, look for the right certifications. You want API with the current rating or ILSAC GF6 for modern engines. These ensure the oil meets minimum protection standards. Step four, always use full synthetic for extended oil change intervals. Full synthetics resist breakdown far better than conventional or synthetic blends, worth every penny. And here's my personal take after looking at all this data. If you're in a moderate to hot climate, if you drive hard, or if you plan to keep your car past 150,000 miles, move up to 5W30 or 0W30 full synthetic. Your engine will run quieter, burn less oil, and last significantly longer. One more thing. If you've got a high mileage engine that's burning oil or leaking, then consider a high mileage formula. But if your engine is healthy, regular full synthetic is better. 
High mileage oils have seal conditioners that you don't actually need. Look, here's the bottom line. Car manufacturers recommend 0W20 because it helps them meet government targets. That doesn't mean it's optimal for your engine's lifespan. The data from those 50 engines doesn't lie. Thicker oil provides better protection under real-world conditions, especially if you drive in heat, tow, or plan to keep your car long-term. Your engine doesn't care about marketing, it cares about molecules. Real protection at the microscopic level where metal meets metal thousands of times per second. Now, I want to hear from you. What oil weight are you currently running? And have you ever switched from 0W20 to 5W30 or vice versa? Did you notice any differences in engine noise, smoothness, or oil consumption? Share your real world experience in the comments. It might help someone else save their engine. If this video helped you understand engine oil better, do me a favor, hit that like button and share this with one person who needs to see it. Maybe save them from an expensive mistake. And if you want more content like this, breaking down automotive myths with actual data hit subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching, choose your oil wisely, and I'll see you in the next one.